Hi everybody, Krupa here. And in this short video, I'm gonna show you how you can debug an Apache Cordova-based iOS app using Visual Studio. If you've never done this before, this is really cool and really simple. So let's get started. To debug an iOS app, there are two sets of instructions you need to perform. One set of them needs to be performed on the Mac build machine, and another set needs to be performed on the machine that you're running Visual Studio on. So on the Mac build machine, you have to, the primary task is to install the VSMD remote agent from the NPM. And this, is, this agent is a background service that listens for build requests from Visual Studio. And once it detects it, it does all the necessary things needed to create a package that can be deployed to an iOS simulator or device. As part of doing this, you need to generate a client certificate to establish a secure connection. And this part is really important because as part of generating a client certificate, you get information such as a security pin and the host and IP address of the build machine that you can then input into Visual Studio to go ahead and make the build happen. Speaking of which, let's go to the Visual Studio side of the equation. In Visual Studio, you need to just configure the settings to let it know of both the existence of the Mac build machine and the security pin it needs to communicate with it. And once you've done that, you're pretty much in the clear. All you have to do is set any breakpoints that you want to set in your code, hit F5, and all of the standard debugging functionality you're probably very familiar with will just come into play. And I'm going to show you a demo of all of this. So before we get there, here are some of the commands you need to run to get the NPM package for VSMDA Remote installed and working on your Mac build machine. And all of this should be pretty straightforward. It's just uh, you go to the node package manager, you install the VSMDA remote agent into your user account. And once you've done that, the command for generating a certificate is vs-mda-remote with the argument for generate client cert. And once you've done that and retrieved some of the values, just run the agent by calling vsmda remote. So let's look at all of this in a quick demo. I'm gonna exit PowerPoint and I'm gonna go into Visual Studio. What I have here is a very simple app. This app is nothing more than some text and a button. This button, when clicked, changes the background color of the entire application. It's pretty simple. And for now, what I want to do is not do any debugging or worry about setting breakpoints. Instead, let's just configure Visual Studio. Let's configure Mac Build Machine to know about the existence of each other. So the first thing I want to do is go to Tools, Options. And in Visual Studio, find the category called Tools for Apache Cordova and find the remote agent configuration entry. Once you've selected that, you'll see a, a set of options that you need to specify. So the first thing is there's an entry called Enable Remote iOS Processing. By default, it's set to false. Let's go ahead and set it to true. And then there are three values here for host, port, and security pin. We will fill these out in a, in a few moments. But for now, just be aware of this section. Okay, so I'm gonna switch over to the Mac build machine because I'm running in parallels. For me, the switch will be very simple. For you, it might require a few extra steps, maybe even standing up and walking towards another machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and alt tab into my, into the Mac side of the house. And to execute the commands I showed you earlier, we're gonna go ahead and launch the terminal. The terminal is where you can specify the commands that we will use to interact with our VSMDA remote agent. So let me go ahead and first zoom in a bit so you can see things more clearly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is obviously install the VSMDA remote build agent. I've already done that, so I'm not going to show you what that looks like right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to our second step, which is to generate the client certificate. So I'm going to type in vsmda-remote generate client cert, or in this case, I've already typed it in earlier, so I just use the history to go ahead and access it directly and I'm going to hit OK. Once you've done this, as part of generating the client certificate, you'll be given some important information that you'll need to provide for Visual Studio. One of them is enable remote iOS processing. That you've already taken care of earlier. The host value, the port, and security pin. The most interesting value from here is the security pin. I'm going to copy that. And the port number 3000, I can memorize that pretty easily. I'm not going to bother copying that value. I'm gonna go back into Visual Studio. So in our tools options, which I still have running, I'm going to paste my security pin 
which was 554434. The port is 3000. And for the IP address, I could just type in Krupa's MacBook Pro Local, but I tend to prefer just having an actual IP address to enter. And I'm just running the ifconfig command and to get 192.168.1.115. You can alternatively also go to your network tab and go to network preferences and get the value from there. In this case, the same value I got in the terminal, you can get via the network preferences as well. Whatever floats your boat, feel free to go with that. And so what I'm gonna do now is also just go ahead and run the VSMDA remote agent by just typing in vs-mda-remote. And once I've done this, the build agent is currently running and waiting for me to send it builds. So let me go ahead and enter the host value, which I copied earlier. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. I think we're done configuring our remote agent. So with that, all that is left is to go ahead and test our iOS app on something other than Ripple. So I currently have iOS specified for the platform that I want to test. And in the debug dropdown, I'm going to choose simulator. Let's just say, let's choose the iPhone 5S. Why not? And what I'm going to do is hit the play button. And if everything works fine, you'll see that right now, a build is being sent to the Mac build machine and it is built as succeeded. All right, so now you'll see I'm switched back into the Mac side of this particular machine. And I can see my application that I had in Visual Studio now running on the iOS simulator, which is running on the Mac. And I can click change color and you'll see the color of my application change. That is pretty sweet. So that's not all we really wanna do though. What we really wanna do is actually start debugging these apps. And this is actually the easy part and go and close the simulator. So let me open index.js and just for kicks, let's go ahead and specify a breakpoint on a code that'll get run when the button, the change color button gets clicked, set random color, you know, event handler. I'm gonna set a breakpoint right here and just like before, I'm going to go ahead and just hit play. Similar iPhone 5S, the app is being built and it is being sent over to the Mac build machine. All right, so now if I hit change color, the breakpoint should ideally get hit. I'm hitting change color and right now my app seems frozen. And the reason it's frozen is, as you might expect, the breakpoint has been hit. You can see that the line where my breakpoint was is highlighted and the yellow arrow is there indicating the breakpoint's existence. And from here, you can just follow your usual workflow and tools that you probably use for debugging already. I can visually inspect the elements by hovering over them. I can use the console, I can specify watches. I can do all the things that I've probably done many times. And of course, I'm just, you know, no demo of breakpoints can be done without actually showing you stepping into the code, stepping over, and of course, stepping out to get back to where our application is. I'm going to hit continue. And once I've done that, my application should become responsive in the iOS simulator again, and, and it is. So your application runs as expected. So there you have it, a very quick overview of how you can debug an iOS app using Visual Studio by configuring some things on the Mac side with the remote build agent and translating those same settings so that Visual Studio can understand it as part of the tools option. Okay, we're not done yet. There's just one more thing I want to show you guys. Let me jump back to my slides and it's actually gonna be silly because I only have one more slide to show you. If you're in parallels, use coherence to do all the stuff that I'm doing right now. Basically, I did a lot of switching between the Windows side to the iOS side to make everything work. Now imagine if you didn't have to do the switching. Instead for all of your iOS debugging, you get to stay in the iOS window the entire time. I'm gonna first make this not be full screen. I'm going to unfull screen my Parallels instance. And I'm gonna right click on Parallels and say View, Enter Coherence. And what Coherence Mode does is it allows all of my Windows applications to run on the Mac side natively as if they belong there without having any additional Chrome or functionality that comes into play. Let me go ahead and just minimize PowerPoint for now. So I have Visual Studio running and let me set a breakpoint on, let me set my breakpoint again. And actually first let me stop debugging and let me close my iOS simulator. So I'm going, I'm back in Visual Studio 
And notice that right now my Visual Studio is inside the Mac environment. And let's change this to, let's change this to the iPad 3. And I'm going to, not the Ripple, but iPad Retina. And let me go ahead and launch a simulator again. And at this point, notice what happens. I have Visual Studio running. The builds are currently going through. And in a few moments, you'll see the iPad Retina simulator appear. And what I can do now is, let's let the application load. I can, it's a big application. I can hit change color. The breakpoint gets hit. I can just hit say continue. And then you can notice that the color changes. And unlike before where I had to jump back and forth between Windows and OS X, right now I can just keep all of my applications, both Visual Studio and my deploy target, which in this case is the iOS simulator, all just visually in the same field. So that is pretty cool. In fact, I'm gonna continue the presentation directly from my coherence mode, which has PowerPoint also running inside it. So with that, we're almost done. If you have any questions or you need any help, go ahead and just download the extension first. You can use Visual Studio Cordova as the hashtag on Stack Overflow. On Twitter, you can find us at VS Cordova Tools and also email the product team if you have anything at VS Cordova Tools at Microsoft.com. And of course, my name again is Karupa. You know, feel free to contact me as well if you have any questions. And also if you wanna be more involved with our future planning, we're always looking to give people access to some of our upcoming bits, some of the things we're thinking about, and also help you give us some feedback on whether we're heading in the right direction or not. So do send me an email and also follow me on Twitter. See you all next time.